Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about the Omega Speedmaster, the first chronograph on the moon. Now, as I've said before, I certainly appreciate a good watch, but it is certainly not my primary interest, and I know a lot more about clothes than I do about fine timepieces. So because of that, I'm glad that I can introduce to you our new host, Nathan, who is an absolute watch lover and will do a much better job on watches than I ever could. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, Nathan is also our operations manager and uh, he'll be taking it from here. All right, Nathan? Sounds good. Awesome. There are a few great names within the world of watchmaking. Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, and some other brand that you might have heard of. All jokes aside, the world of luxury watches is full of unique and iconic timepieces. If you're interested in learning more about the JLC Reverso, or the world of Rolex, you can check out our video guides on those topics here. But today, we'll be looking at one of the most iconic timepieces from another famed Swiss watchmaker, and one of my personal favorites, the Omega Speedmaster. We'll examine what it's made of, how it works, and ultimately ask the question, does it have a place in your wardrobe? And don't worry, even though it's one of my personal favorites, I'll give an unbiased review. But before all that, Let's first take a look at the history of Omega and the Speedmaster itself. La Generale Watch Company was founded in 1848 by Louis Braun. They incorporated the name Omega in 1903, becoming, oh boy, Louis Braun et Frère Omega Watch & Co. When they became a subsidiary of the Swatch Group in 1982, they officially changed their name to Omega SA. Since the beginning, Omega has been located in the Swiss city of La chaux du fonds which achieved UNESCO recognition for its history of watchmaking in 2009. As a side note, some other great names in watchmaking come from this region, including Gerard Perigo, Tissot, Movado, Zenith, and of course, Rolex. But Omega isn't content just to sit among these other watchmakers. In 1892, founder Louis Braun created the first minute repeating wristwatch in collaboration with Audemars Piguet. The British Royal Flying Corps chose Omega as the timekeeper for its combat units in 1917. The Olympics have utilized Omega as the official timekeepers since 1932. The British military was still using Omega in the 1940s during World War II. You can see Tom Hardy's character Farrier use his Omega timepiece to calculate how much flying time he had left in the movie Dunkirk. And Omega has been on the wrist of everyone's favorite secret agent, James Bond, since 1995. But perhaps Omega's greatest achievement happened in 1969 by putting the first watch on the moon. And which watch did it? None other than the Omega Speedmaster. Interestingly, the Speedmaster was never created for Lunar Voyage. It actually joined the Omega lineup in 1957 as a racing chronograph, specifically the model 2915-1. What's a chronograph, you ask? Ah, didn't I say? A chronograph is a type of watch which features smaller subdials within the larger main dial of the watch. The primary function is to keep a record of elapsed time versus the actual time of day. The chronograph's tachymeter scale can also be used to calculate the speed of a moving object. So the easiest way to think of a chronograph is like a stopwatch. Of course, chronographs can also incorporate other features known as complications. Those complications can include the date, the phase of the moon, and many others. The Speedmaster's design followed the simple yet functional chronographs of the 1920s and 30s. The Speedmaster's name was given to complement Omega's already established Seamaster and Railmaster collections. These original racing chronographs were powered by a manual wind movement, which means unlike a quartz or an automatic movement, the Speedmaster has to be wound by hand on a regular basis to keep time. Being manual wind allows the watch to not lose any function in low gravity. Because automatic watches utilize the pull of gravity on the rotor to wind the watch, this wouldn't be functional in space. And quartz watches weren't even available until 1969. Even though the Speedmaster is famous for being the moon watch, it actually went into space several years earlier. It journeyed to space on the wrist of astronaut Walter Shearer in the 1962 MA-8 mission. The Speedmaster Warren was Shearer's personal Omega CK-2998. 
Although Shira's watch performed well, it didn't stop NASA from wanting to make sure that they could rely on the Speedmaster for future missions. NASA set rigorous testing for all watches that they were considering to be the moon watch. This included being able to cope in temperatures as extreme as 200 degrees Fahrenheit to zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's roughly 93 degrees Celsius to negative 18 degrees Celsius. Watches had to pass both high and low pressure tests and a test to ensure function in a pure oxygen atmosphere with no seals breaking. Watches submitted also had to be shockproof and anti-magnetic. All dials and numbers had to be legible in low light conditions, which makes sense for a dark spacecraft. The crystal and case had to be anti-reflective, which is why Omega chose a satin finished steel case. And of course, timekeeping accuracy was measured. Out of the short list of selected watches, both the Longines Wittenauer and the Rolex Cosmograph both failed testing. Which means on June 1st, 1965, the Omega Speedmaster was chosen as the watch that was certified for manned space missions. This means to this day, Omega is likely NASA's longest consistent supplier. Fun fact here, Hamilton actually submitted a pocket watch for consideration. Needless to say, the idea of a pocket watch floating around made them immediately disqualified. In 1969, the Speedmaster was on the wrist of the Apollo 11 crew who were on their way to the moon. Due to a malfunction on an electronic timer, Neil Armstrong actually opted to keep his watch in the spacecraft as backup. However, Buzz Aldrin opted to wear his Speedmaster as he journeyed out of the spacecraft and onto the moon. Buzz, by the way, is actually a self-professed watch guy which is certainly something we approve of. One year later, in 1970, the Speedmaster once again journeyed into space on the Apollo 13 mission. Famously, a ruptured oxygen tank jeopardized the descent journey, which gave us everyone's favorite line when something goes wrong. Houston, we have a problem. By using his Omega Speedmaster, Jack Swigert was able to time the critical burn to get the crew home safely. Omega was given the Silver Snoopy Award by NASA for its critical role in the safety of the astronauts on this mission. Truly, the Speedmaster represents an incredible chapter in watchmaking and NASA's history. But what does the Speedmaster look like today? Luckily, Omega provides a ton of information on their website, including a downloadable PDF guide, which you'll see is quite useful because there's so many variants in the Speedmaster line. There are models such as the Speedmaster Racing line, which pays homage to the timepiece's racing routes. The Speedmaster 38, which showcases some smaller Speedmasters. And there's different editions of the Moon Watch, including the Dark Side of the Moon, White Side of the Moon, and many more. The watch we're looking at today is the Omega Speedmaster Professional reference 310.30.42.50.01.001. E2 is the millimeters. Like, it all means something, but they're just so long. Traditionally, the Omega Speedmaster Professional comes in a black dial, but as we've mentioned, there are limited editions that come with gold, silver, white, and other color dials. But there's no denying that the iconic Moonwatch has always had a black dial. And overall, the design has changed very little throughout its history. If you go on Omega's website and click Speedmaster, there's a special section for just the Moonwatch. Under that section, you'll find the Moonwatch with various strap options, as well as the white gold and rose gold Speedmasters. So now we're gonna look at some in-depth details about the Speedmaster. The watch is crafted in stainless steel with a 42 millimeter case and a 20 millimeter lug width. As we already know, the dial is finished in black and features three subdials. These subdials measure the elapsed hours, minutes, and the current running seconds. The hands, including the chronograph hand, are finished with Super Luminova to improve legibility in low light settings. The dial is protected by a Hesalite acrylic crystal, given that it's shatterproof, is safer for use in space. A traditional sapphire crystal is available as well, which is what I have on my watch. The crown isn't a watertight screw down, but rather a push pull, which results in only five bar of water resistance. Five bar is equivalent to 50 meters or 167 feet. This in watch terms means the Speedmaster is only splash proof. Sorry, Mr. Bond, this isn't a good watch for a Naval commander. The watch is powered by Omega's manual wind 3861 movement. This is Omega's newest growth from the original 321 movement. It now boasts a master chronometer certification and a coaxial escapement. And although the Speedmaster typically comes on a stainless steel bracelet, it's entirely possible to swap it out for a leather or fabric strap. How much can you expect to spend on a brand new Speedmaster? Omega's website has the Speedmaster listed in a range of $6,300 to $7,150. This depends on your choice of crystal or if you want it on a strap or on the bracelet. 
And like most elements of pre-owned clothing, you can pay less for gently used models. But as always, be aware of fakes on the market. After all, a watch that has this much cachet definitely has its fakes out there. And as is the case with a lot of iconic watches, certain vintage Speedmasters can cost a lot more depending on the model and the condition. Luckily, if you go to an Omega boutique or find yourself in an authorized retailer, you can be safe knowing you're buying the real thing. So now we come down to the ultimate question. Is the Omega Speedmaster worth it? I think it's easiest to start by looking at some of its flaws. See, I told you, I'm going to do an honest review. If you're the type of person who likes a simple, minimalist watch design, then the Speedmaster probably isn't for you. After all, this is a highly functional watch with a complicated dial, which definitely pushes it further towards being a sports watch than a formal dress watch. As we mentioned earlier, if you want a watch that can handle water, this probably isn't it either. Honestly, this is my biggest gripe about the watch. I find that I have to be quite conscious of the watch when I'm near water. So if I'm by the pool or doing dishes, the Speedmaster is not on my wrist. It can handle a splash or two, but you don't want to dive in. And it's not worth it if you're set on having a quartz or an automatic movement. The traditional Speedmaster Professional is a manual wind, so it needs to be wound nearly every day. However, if you want an automatic Speedmaster, Omega offers those too. Granted, this is a great way to bond with your watch, but if you're likely to forget, the watch will die. All these points considered, we certainly feel that on balance, the Omega Speedmaster is worth it. It has enough of a unique take and style and a ton of history. For me, the Speedmaster has a personal connection to my childhood. My dad is an aerospace engineer who grew up during the space race. He was a young boy when Apollo 11 landed on the moon. As a kid from Ohio, Neil Armstrong was his hero, as well as other astronauts and pilots of the space age. My dad joined the aerospace engineering program because he found out that Neil Armstrong was a professor at his local university. Fun fact, the Speedmaster in that photo that Neil Armstrong's wearing is actually in solid gold and was a gift from Omega. I grew up sharing a passion for aviation and space history with my dad. Therefore, I feel like I'm wearing a piece of history on my wrist. It was a tool worn by early space pioneers to make their way home. Furthermore, a watch is only made better by an emotional attachment like this. Naturally, my story will differ from yours, but if you have items that have deep sentimental value, then you'll know where I'm coming from. From a style standpoint, the Speedmaster has great versatility. The stainless steel bracelet is timeless and it shows the heritage of the watch. It looks sporty and can be worn with many casual ensembles. You can give the Speedmaster different dimension by going with various fabric straps. NATO straps are typically inexpensive, so you can go with different colors and designs. A simple black fabric strap looks elegant and harmonizes with the dial as well as being accurate with the NASA spacesuit. But you probably don't want to wear it over your sleeves. The watch looks fantastic on a distressed leather strap paired with a sport coat. The dark dial makes the watch easy to dress up. Granted, it's not a traditional dress watch, like this gold Fabergé, rose gold H. Moser, and this dressy vintage reissue Omega Seamaster. But in our world today, you'll see various casual items like an Apple watch and sneakers worn with tailored clothing. So having a really nice mechanical wristwatch will set you apart from the crowd. And although 42 millimeters is about average for a watch these days, I know that it can be a bit large for some people. If that's the case for you, or maybe you want to go for a more vintage style, then smaller models like the 38, Reduced, or First Omega in Space are great choices. Plus, the watch from the 1962 Mercury Atlas 8 mission had a 39 millimeter case, so the 38 is closer in size while retaining all the style points of the full-size model. Overall, the Speedmaster is a testament to Omega as a company, as well as their dedication to making beautiful, functional timepieces. Put it next to a similar watch from Breitling, Rolex, or Tag Heuer, and we're confident that you'll agree in a great many cases, it's worth it. In today's video, I'm wearing a business casual outfit in various tones of brown. My sport coat is in a brown, blue, and gray check from the brand Caruso. I purchased this jacket recently using Raphael's 80% off eBay hack, which is a great value considering this jacket retails for over $1,500. My white dress shirt has barrel cuffs and is made to measure by Beckett and Robin. My dress tan chinos feature cuffs and side tab adjusters, and they were made for me by Beckett and Robin. My shoes are a well-worn and well-loved pair of Allen Edmonds chuckas. My socks are from Fort Belvedere, and they feature brown and tan shadow stripes. My tie is our navy grenadine, which I chose because it harmonizes with the blue checks in my jacket. My pocket square is in white linen with navy hand-rolled X stitches. On my left hand is a simple rose gold wedding band, and on my right hand is my sterling silver class ring with a blue sapphire. On my wrist is my trusty Omega Speedmaster, the watch I wear most days. It's paired with a brown distressed Hodinkee strap, which picks up the browns in my outfit. 
The various watches you've seen in today's video were all supplied by Delray Watch Supply, but this video is still 100% not sponsored. Of course, you can find all the various Fort Belvedere accessories that I'm wearing, as well as many others in our Fort Belvedere store here. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll talk about the iconic Omega Seamaster chronograph. Speedmaster. Speed Speedmaster. Speedmaster. Yeah. Uh, Speedmaster is a different watch. Oh, yeah, Speedmaster. Let's see this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about the Omega Seamaster, the first watch on the moon. No, Speedmaster. Speedmaster. Speed. <laughs> I am. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is all about the Omega Speedmaster. <laughs> Welcome with me, Nathan, to our team of hosts. Hi, Nathan. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So Nathan knows a lot about watches, a lot more about me, and uh, he's also our operations manager and does a few other things here. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, you are really into? Uh, baseball. And I hate baseball. God, <laughs> you have to pay me to go to a baseball game. <laughs> but that's it. We're all different people. And uh, Preston is standing here laughing his ass as well. Because he also <laughs> likes baseball. <laughs> With that being said, enjoy the video on the Omega Seamaster. I'm sure you'll enjoy Nathan.